Hi, I'm Bill Selick, and I'm going to walk you through the NCTM strands. Today we are going to look at the first strand, Number and Operations. There are three standards, and this is the third video of the three standards. So we're going to look only at Compute Fluently and make reasonable estimates. I'll just refer to it, uh, just to make things go a little faster, Compute Fluently. So this one again is significantly shorter than our first standard. The first one, Understanding Numbers, is just by far the biggest of them all. This third one is being able to, to really understand and have it become second nature for students. So the thing we want to teach students is not just here's how to compute numbers, here's how to add them, here's how to subtract them. It's here's how to manipulate them, being able to fluently do it so you don't just have a big pile of manipulatives and you get off by one. So in this case, the photo shows compartments, just in, you know an old uh, an old tray you can find in the 99 cent store, or something you inherit from an older from a teacher who doesn't use them anymore. Perfect for organizing manipulatives. So if you're trying to count a quantity, if you're doing maybe seven plus two, then you have all of your manipulatives in that big tray. You put seven of them in one, two in the other, and then when you add them together it organizes itself so students don't get lost. Oh, there's one under my shoe and they're not caught up with how do I organize it because you teach them the strategy of how to compute fluently. Our second standard talks a lot about understanding the meaning. Now if students don't understand the meaning they're going to be completely lost. But <laughs> there's so much to know in math, particularly by the time you know, we get through all the fact families when we start multiplying you just need to be able to memorize. So don't be afraid to teach your students how to memorize and don't be afraid to practice memorizing. Because if students don't have simple facts memorized, by the time they get to fifth grade, just they'll be completely lost. They're not gonna know where the path is. They're gonna spend all their time calculating everything and they're not gonna spend their time working on more advanced math functions. Marilyn Burns is talking a lot about math anxiety in her book. A big part of math anxiety is because students don't have that foundation. They're given a worksheet and you say, okay, fill out the worksheet. How do you do it? Look at the example. Okay, now I know how to do this worksheet. We don't give them that foundation. So if we give students that foundation, if we give them that fluency, if they understand numbers, if they understand the meanings, and if they can compute numbers together fluently, all those combinations that I just talked about, if they can do that fluently, they're going to be significantly less anxious when it comes to doing math. They have that good foundation, they understand those concepts, and they're good to go. Math anxiety, goodbye. One of the things that you should be doing when you plan lessons, even though you have books and pacing guides, is to actually see what your students are doing before you teach them a lesson. If you see your students have already mastered a concept, you can build on it. If you see your students are completely missing a concept, you can start earlier than where your original lesson was. This is typically called a pre-assessment. In lesson plans, if you're taking uh, EDC 448 at Laverne, the pre-assessment involves observing students. What are these students doing? If you ask them a question, how do these students respond? So that you know what the lesson needs to be. Lessons shouldn't be, all right, I'm gonna turn the page and teach this lesson because it's what's in my book. We as teachers are responsible for that. Um, depending on administrators, we might have to teach something that is more towards the book, but you always want to tailor your lessons toward your students. So don't make it just, I'm going to teach all my students. Learn your students, observe your students, and that is what's going to dictate what your lessons are and what you teach them. A big part of just computing fluently, getting comfortable with something, is being able to do something every day. So I knew that something my students were going to struggle with was data analysis, which is basically building a graph. I knew from day one of kindergarten, this was one of my old kindergarten classes, day one of kinder, they were going to struggle with building graphs. So I did a real-life example every morning with them. We had to do the lunch count. 
So you can see three columns. Students would say the sentence, I have a snack, or I need a snack with white milk, or I need a snack with chocolate milk. For the first month of school, I would model this. They would tell me what they needed, and I would graph it for them. In this case, you see a vertical graph. After about a month, I'd have one of my higher students help me out. After two months, the higher students could do it on their own, and kind of the mid-students would be able to do it with some help. By the end of the year, every student could build this graph because it was part of our daily routine. Every student knew how to compute fluently. And even though this graphing is not number and operations, it's data analysis and probability, being able to compute fluently, understanding how to add one to a column is what really what we focused on. So it hit a handful of standards, in this case by doing it every day. Every student, even the one that couldn't write his own name, was able to do this graph because it became a daily routine. If you're estimating, if you're practicing estimating numbers, practicing estimating distances, practice estimating size, all of that again leads to uh, being able to compute more fluently. If you look at something and say, oh, that mug of pencils, I think there's two pencils, but there's really 40, then you need more practice with that to look at it and say, oh, that looks like 35 pencils. We don't also want to go to the other extreme and have students say, there's one billion pencils. So it's being able to make those reasonable estimates with whatever it may be. However young your kids are, they're really not too young to use calculators. You don't have to teach them what all the functions are. If they're younger kids, preschool, kindergarten, just put it in one of the play centers and just let them play with those numbers. They're going to recognize the numbers. They're going to recognize some of the operations. They'll see the addition sign, subtraction sign, and they'll start playing with it. By the time students get in the second, third, fourth, fifth grade, then they're going to look at that and say, oh, I know that calculator. No problem. These are awesome. These are fun. It becomes a tool. It doesn't become the fourth grade teacher saying, let me teach you how to use a calculator, and students are intimidated by it. So again, it's just kind of laying that foundation, giving them a solid framework with which to build on. In the same thread, put a whole bunch of numbers, rulers, measurement tools in the writing center. Students are going to play with these naturally. Naturally, they love math and are curious about math and use math to interact with the world. So if you put rulers and measuring tools in a writing center, they're going to use that to draw the picture after they write their story. And really, just as many manipulatives as you can get, just don't throw them literally at them, but just as many manipulatives as you can, the better off students are going to be. It allows them to explore numbers more. It allows them to explore how numbers fit together, the meaning, and ultimately will lead to more fluent computation. Ultimately, this third standard, compute fluently. If numbers don't make sense to students, then <laughs> nothing else we talk about in math really matters. It has to make sense, and then students are going to be able to build on that. So this was our third standard, compute fluently, making reasonable estimates, and that's the end of our number and operations strand. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.